Welcome back to IT Camps. In this demonstration, we're going to take a look at the Windows Server 2012 Hyper-V scalability. We'll take a look at some of the new features. So let me switch over to my server here. So I'm back on my server, Windows Server 2012 box, and there's your default server manager. So to show off some of these features in Hyper-V, I'm going to switch over to my Hyper-V manager. Now I'm just going to use the local Hyper-V manager that's built in locally. And so here is Hyper-V manager that's the default install with Windows Server 2012 after I've installed the role of Hyper-V. Now notice I just have a couple of uh, virtual machines built out here, and we'll talk about those more in just a minute. But one of the first features I want to talk about is the networking improvements that we've got in virtual machines. So let's go over here to the virtual switch manager. So over here in the actions pane of um, Hyper-V Manager, I'm going to click on that and it's going to open up my virtual networking. Now if you haven't done much with Hyper-V yet, it's always suggested that you set up your virtual networks first. So let me just start going through the process so I could go out and create a virtual switch. Now I'm not actually going to create one because I've already got a couple of them built out here. But first off, to create a virtual switch, we walk through and it's going to build me all the processes. Notice that's the actual network card that I've got it in here. One of the interesting things I want to point out at this point is enable single root I.O. virtualization. Remember back in the slides where we were talking about SRIVO right here, that's where you enable that with a particular network switch. So I can do it now at the time of creating a new virtual switch, or I could go back and modify an existing switch. But let me wash, walk, caution you about creating or modifying the existing one. So if I cancel this new one we're creating, let me go back into that virtual manager and highlight one of the existing ones. Notice this is grayed out. Why? Because that switch is currently in use. So I can't make that kind of switch to a network, virtual network that's automatically already running. So now let's go look at an individual virtual machine and look at how that impacts that virtual machine and some changes that we can make there. So let me go to this base server. So I've got just a base server running here and if I right mouse click on this base server and go to the settings, that's where we get to most of the settings. So this is all the settings of how that virtual machine is working. And we're talking about network adapter here. So notice right now I don't have any of the network adapters connected. So if I click on the drop down box here, I could add one of those network cards that we had previously created. So that's generally the best rule of thumb is when you're setting up virtualization, go out there and build you a private network, a public network, or you know, and, and get all that networking configured first, then go out and build your virtual machines and add those as you build them. I'm not actually going to modify that, but if I click on the little plus sign here next to the network adapter, notice some new features that come up. Again, we haven't had this in the previous version, so here under networking I've got hardware acceleration. So let's take a look at our options here under hardware acceleration. So here under virtual machine queues or VMQs again that we talked about in the slides, request a physical network adapter that supports that feature. So if that my network card is supported, boom, I could I could enable that right here for this virtual machine. And then IPsec task offloading. This supports for a physical network adapter and the guest operating system that requires to be able to offload this IPsec task. So we have to have the appropriate network card to be able to do this and boom, right there, I would enable to do that. Once I enabled here, it would then allow me to associate the range of anywhere from one up to 4,096 of how much I want to offload to that processing. Okay, so this takes the workload off of our processor that we're using at the host environment and then allows us to do put more of that on the network card. And then finally, the SRIVO, remember that we enabled ahead of time. Here's where we would come and enable that inside of the virtual machine. So it's kind of, you got to do it in the right sequence. You got to create your virtual machines, then create your, your, your virtual networking. And then now when we come in and set the hardware acceleration rules, after we modify that, we can then enable those features inside this individual virtual machine. Again, these are some new features in Server 2012, and you want to go out there and take a look at those. Now let me remind you um, that you do have a chance to go out and download Server 2012 today. So this is our call to action slide or next step actions um, from the slide deck um, where you can go download Windows Server 2012 today. There's a free 180 day trial out there where you can get your hands on it for free and try this and go and do the exact steps that I just did in the demo. So if you haven't had a chance yet, make sure you go out there and check the other sessions if you haven't looked at them already. Thanks.